Growing food in Chile. What is the lowdown on growing food in Chile? Uh, is it expensive just to go buy food in Chile? Well, keep in mind there's not a lot of drive throughs here. You can't call out for pizza because there ain't no call out for pizza unless you're in the city. If you're in the city, yeah, you got all that stuff. But not me. Look, I'm out in the country, guys. Look there behind me. I'm out in the sticks. I don't call for pizza. I don't call for Chinese. It doesn't exist. And there's very few to almost no drive through in this area of the Chile where I'm at. Santiago has it, and I want to go to Santiago. And that's fine. But you should expect, you should uh, plan on growing your own food. So this little video for you is a short on growing food in Chile. So here we go. Now I grew up on a farm in South Carolina. My parents had beef cattle. We had 280 acres give or take and I'm very much a fan of honey my parents did not have honey but they taught me to uh, experiment and I have honeybees actually those honeybees are sitting on top of my blacksmith forge right now and I've got to move them um, see my house in the background over there I have two more hives hives I have a total of five hives this is my firewood which is what I cook my food with if I want to have chicken for dinner or I want to have eggs, I come out here, and actually I have Thomas, who is the chief egg hunter, to come out here, open this up, and get the eggs out of here. And Thomas is better at opening this up than I am, but the hens are in there, and you, you got to go from the other side, the hens are in there doing their thing. So I do buy raw chicken and uh, whole chickens, and I cut them up, but we have a chicken yard, and we also have a chicken tractor. I, uh, Lori and I are gonna buy ch meat birds, run them in this chicken tractor, which is gonna go out there where our pig is right now. We did have 10 pigs, I'm transitioning over to sheep right now. Also, I put some fence up to be able to have more sheep and pigs. The key to having uh, larger good livestock is having good fences. Nobody likes chasing animals. All this area is going to be fenced in soon enough as well. Let's get to the, the growing side. No, I almost forgot. There's my pens where I work my sheep or my pigs or my little cows and I got a doctor and whatever uh, prep them to be slaughtered. Over there's the water tower where I do my own slaughtering. Doesn't cost me anything to make my own food. So let's run over here, and first thing we're going to bump into is our bunny cage. And it looks like an outhouse. It was an outhouse, now it's a tool shed. So I have a male and a female buddy. Actually, we have several of them. And uh, about every two or three weeks, we have rabbit for dinner. What's that mean? That means Jim goes out in the yard, finds a rabbit, uh, humanely clobbers it in the back of the head, and then uh, preps it for the dinner table. The skins and pelts are kept for making blankets and comforters for the beds, which are uh, frozen in the freezer and all cured at one time. This is our corn crop from 2018 to 19. This is 2019 right now, we're in the fall. And Lori's got peas planted in there too. Here's the rest of the bunnies. This is uh, where we raise the little bunnies to uh, to feed them out and if you look at that that is a bunny tractor and look under there there's bunny poo and you can take that bunny poo and put it right on top of the garden right away and won't burn anything up although they do pee so what we do is uh, we move this bunny tractor down a row move it over run it back down the next row and on and on and on that gives us free fertilizer uh, we do have to pay for our bunny food what we don't pull out of the garden we give to the bunnies and they're in there so uh, bunnies are real productive into onto the garden. Lori is my garden queen. I'm the garden slave. What's that mean? It means Lori tells me what to do in the garden. Lori has her degree in horticulture from Clemson University and used to work at Biltmore House and Gardens in Asheville, North Carolina. So don't try to tell Lori what to do with her garden. I don't and I don't recommend you try either because it's hers to mess up. Granted, there are problems. But whose garden is perfect? So we have some really cool veggies here. Cabbage going on, peas going on. I plowed up over there. There are some of our spices and, and herbs over there. She loves mint. Lori likes to plant things we don't eat so much, but uh, as well, flowers and things. We have rhubarb down there. 
um, some squash that are finishing out and pumpkins. These are uh, yellow acelga, red acelga, and over there is our, my favorite, that is actually my plant, is my uh, artichoke. And um, that artichoke is about ready to be, to be parted out. I'm going to go over and take a look. Now here's that artichoke. Let's get over on this thing, my sh shadow went in. And he, that is a, 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 a fruit right there that's kind of off the top. And actually it's, it, I don't know how big that's going to get, but I probably ought to clip it off and let the, gar the artichoke grow in, okay? But artichokes are related to um, thistles and, or thorns and they get really big. This artichoke was way up here and I cut it back recently. And if you know Linda at the New Orleans Gardener, hey Linda, uh, she is an artichoke fan as well. So here's our really cool acelga. Acelga grows really well here. So do potatoes. So does uh, our rhubarb over here, right there. Uh, um, our squash are getting at the end of the year. The frost is going to hit them any time now, so we can expect that to go away. There's some honeybees there on our selga eating up, and a little stray leaf here of let leaf lettuce. Uh, lettuce grows really well here. Potatoes, beets, carrots. Uh, Lori plans to fill up a row full of carrots. This is our greenhouse. This year, uh, we didn't have such a good year in the greenhouse. I'm not going to go in there too much because... Uh, it will fog up the camera for one thing. Basically, this is our tomato house right now. And um, Lori is in charge of making sure that does what it needs to do. We've got some plans for in there. Uh, she's growing tomatoes in there, basil. I don't know what all else, but there's a lot of good things going on there. Green peppers as well and chili peppers, okay? That's not a heated greenhouse. We intend to build another one over here. A big one over here, four times the size of this one. And here are our raspberries. Um, our neighbor gave us these raspberries, and they've done quite well. So here are our raspberries. Our neighbor gave us cuttings, and this is about two years later. Let me give you a look at one of these raspberries here. Isn't that beautiful? And let me tell you, not only are they beautiful, but they taste really good too. There's another one that's going to go down the gullet. Okay. These are boysenberries here, which I prefer over raspberries. But we've got a full hedge here full of uh, basically three rows, two and a half rows of, of uh, raspberries and boysenberries. So there's our garden. Uh, everything's got water. There's a main water tap here that goes to feed all the irrigation. And along the road we have cherry, one cherry tree, and the rest of those are all apple trees. I think another two years I'll have apples. This pasture here is supposed to get plowed up soon. I'm working on that. Pigs tear it up. That's a fact of life. And I really do enjoy pigs. Some of you may know that we had problems with aerocephalus, which is a, a bacteria that gets in the soil and it kills piglets. And uh, pigs are carriers, and I could have could have antibiotic them until they got over that. But I'm not a real fan of antibiotics, so I, I opted to uh, let the soil rest for a year. And I'm going to move over to sheep. Sheep aren't carriers, just pigs, pigs and humans. So we're going to say goodbye to the pigs for a year, and then we'll come back to them. In the meantime, I'm going to do sheep. So there's my little video for you on doing food here in Chile. Uh, we try to grow as much as what we can. We try to grow what's most economical for us to grow. Uh, in other words, uh, a 125-pound bag of potatoes is about 8 to $10 here. Mm, should I grow those? Probably not. Uh, it's easier to go buy them and just the effort and time spent growing them. Yeah, they grow like weeds here So that's not a real problem, but I, I got other things I can grow that are, are more expensive that I'd rather grow like the uh, Crows having to fit there or the the hawks are I'm sorry. I much rather grow lettuce. I much rather grow uh, my own uh, well, spinach and thing and acelga and things like that and carrots and uh, then I, I come out better in the long run so anyways how to grow your own food in Chile start at the beginning find out what you want what you like see if you can grow it in your in your area here it rains a lot and it's cool
never gets really hot here. So uh, this corn on our part is, I won't say wishful thinking, but we're praying. <laughs> and uh, it's just now that corn's really starting to come to this area. You don't see a lot of it grown by the farmers either because uh, the growing season's a little shorter here. So, but anyways, uh, Chow from Chili X family, thank you for subscribing. If you like the video, thumbs up. And that person that always gives me the thumbs down, God bless you. Bless your little heart. And uh, uh, please tell your family and friends about it. And if you'd like to help my channel grow, and you'd like more videos like this, uh, like our other subscribers who are members of our PayPal club, please feel free to donate to PayPal through me. Uh, $2, $1.50. $100, I don't care. I love all donations. Thank you very much, Chow from Chili Expat Family. Five years ago, Lori, the boys, and I pulled up our roots and moved to Chile. Let me tell you, it was really scary. We were looking for an adventure, an adventure of a lifetime. And what we really wanted was just a peaceful place to call home with kind and gentle neighbors. We wanted to enjoy the life that God gave us, free, simple, safe, and more beautiful than you can ever imagine.